Reebok are really ramping up replica production at the moment. For example, these two excellent replicas of a dead Tyrannosaurus Rex have just arrived at Everything Dinosaur. Why models of dead T-Rex, I hear you ask? Well, Tyrannosaurus Rex didn't have everything his own way. Stick around and we'll tell you more. Hi, Everything Dinosaur here, and today we're going to look at two figures. We're going to look at the new for 2020 T-Rex Bites the Dust carcass in the plain variant, and also its counterpart, the T-Rex Bites the Dust in the jungle colour version. These are a magnificent pair of 1 to 35 scale models, similar sculpts too, and in the same colour scheme as the Rebo Killer Queen T-Rex models that were introduced in the spring of 2019. Let's take a look at these corpses and also briefly review what the fossil record tells us about the tough life that Tyrannosaurus rex actually had. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit that notification button to be part of the conversation. This is the Rebor T-Rex carcass bites the dust in the plain colour scheme. The figure measures approximately 34 centimeters in length. As with all Rebor replicas, the attention to detail is exquisite. We love the fantastic scales of various sizes on the underside of the body. This might be a deceased dinosaur, but it's a spectacular figure nonetheless. There is certainly a lot to admire with delicate skin folds and creases along its flanks, and this is a beautifully painted Tyrannosaur corpse. The numerous wounds along the back, on the head and on the thigh represent bite marks and deep scratches made by claws. This is one Tyrannosaurus rex that has been killed by another T-Rex. The wounds have been given a glossy wet look adding to their realism. From the blooded teeth it seems that this dinosaur didn't go down without a fight. There's a substantial bite mark on the neck and other wounds to be found on the body. The face has been badly mauled, reflecting paleontology, as face biting is known amongst Tyrannosaurs. If we turn the model over, we can see that the neck wound is very large, and it could represent the fatal injury. Out of the box, both plain and jungle need their tails added. To insert the tail, hold the model in front of its thigh, and push to secure the tail in place. As one of the largest terrestrial carnivores that ever lived, there's a huge interest in the ecology, diet and behaviour of Tyrannosaurus rex. So what evidence do we have of these predators actively hunting and consuming members of their own kind? Firstly, we can infer how T. rex may have behaved by looking at the behaviour of apex terrestrial predators that are around today. Take lions, for example. Subadult males, rejected by their own pride, can be attacked and killed by adult males if they should stray into a neighbouring territory. Lionesses can also be killed and occasionally eaten by the larger males. Various species of tiger have been known to kill and consume members of their own kind. Cannibalism is known in crocodilians, living members of the Archosauria. In fact, large crocodiles and alligators, catching and eating smaller members of their own species, it's been widely documented. Fights amongst birds of the same species, that other group of extent archosaurs, are also known. Many types of songbird will fight members of their own species over things like nesting sites. Robins, for example, are particularly vicious. Birds such as vultures will squabble over feeding rights, and eagles too are known to indulge in combat with members of their own species, although fatalities are extremely rare. When individuals from the same species compete with each other for resources such as hunting grounds, mates, territories, food and water, this is termed intraspecific competition. And as intraspecific competition is seen in living archosaurs and in apex hypercarnivores around today, it is probable that T. rex competed with other members of its own species in similar ways. 
We can also look at the fossil record and examine T. rex bones to see if they provide any evidence. Such studies have led to some surprising discoveries. Take specimen number RSM P2523.8 for example, the T. rex known as Scotty, whose fossilised remains were found in southwestern Saskatchewan, Canada. About 65% of the skeleton has been recovered, and at around 30 metres long, Scotty is arguably the largest and heaviest T. rex described to date. The skeleton of this 8.8 tonne giant shows lots of injuries. What paleontologists term pathology, including broken ribs and intriguingly damage to its skull and jaw, along with shattered tailbones that may have been caused by bites from another T. rex. Sue, originally referred to as specimen number BHI2033, but now known as FMNH2081, perhaps the most famous T-Rex skeleton in the world, also shows plenty of pathology. The tip of a T-Rex tooth was found jammed between the broken ends of a partially healed rib. Sue had been bitten by another T-Rex and survived the encounter. This is very strong evidence that these giants fought with each other. Indeed, when Sue's skull was being excavated, the unusual position of the bones from the left side of her face led the field team to a gory conclusion. Sue's left post-audible bone had been smashed and left dangling below her eye socket. The left squamosal, the bone immediately behind the post-orbital, was also broken and the back end of her jaw had been pulled out of place, whilst the front portion remained in situ. It was concluded these traumatic injuries were not caused post-mortem. It was claimed that Sue died, as she'd had a face ripped off in a fight with another T-Rex. Nasty. Evidence of severe facial wounds has been recorded in the closely related Tyrannosaur Dasplesosaurus. These injuries were thought to have been inflicted as a result of intraspecific combat. In a scientific paper published in 2010, eminent paleontologists Nicholas Longrich, Jack Horner, Gregory Erickson and Phil Curry conducted an in-depth examination of the then-known T. rex fossil material. They discovered that fossil bones from four specimens bear tooth marks and gouges made by massive carnivorous dinosaurs. As T. rex is the only supersized carnivore known from the late Maastrichtian of Western North America, the researchers inferred that these marks were made by another Tyrannosaurus feeding. This was evidence of cannibalism in the T. rex species. This evidence does not mean that Tyrannosaurs battled each other and fought to the death, but Nicholas Longrich, one of the authors of the paper, did comment that it's surprising how frequent this behavior seems to have been. It could mean that they, T. rex were really thorough at cleaning up after animals that died in their environment, or it could mean that they were killing and eating each other fairly often. Given that this type of behaviour has such a low potential for preservation, cannibalism seems to have been surprisingly common in the Tyrannosaurus rex species. It therefore seems appropriate that Reba has made this pair of dead T. rexes. By looking at living apex predators, those archosaurs still about today, and by examining the fossil record, we can infer that T. rex got into fights with members of its own kind, and some of those encounters could have had fatal consequences for the combatants. It's great to see Rebor extending their dinosaur model range by introducing these two carcasses under the Bites the Dust label, a pair of dead theropods in 1 to 35 scale. These are not the first carcasses to be introduced by Rebor. They have produced a model of a dead Triceratops under the title The Fallen Queen, as well as a decapitated Tenontosaurus, the Cyrenian Hind, which was part of a trio of figures that included an Acrocanthrosaurus and a set of Deinonychus dinosaur models. So Rebor have made several deceased dinosaurs to date, which brings us to this, our question of the day. What other dinosaur would you like Rebor to make a carcass model of? Would you be looking for a dearly departed duckbill? 
or perhaps an armoured ankylosaur that had met its demise? Would you like Rebor to make another carcass model of a meat-eating dinosaur? Or perhaps a sauropod or stegosaur may complement your collection? Let us know in the video description notes below. We'd love to hear from you. So there you have it, our lowdown on the two new Rebor Bites the Dust carcasses. Rebor is going to be introducing a lot of models in the next few months. We suggest you check out everything Dinosaur on social media so you can keep up to date with new Rebor model introductions. In the meantime, we'll put a link in the video description below to the Rebor section of our website so you can pick up a Bites the Dust carcass in either the plain or jungle variant if you want to. We'll also put a link in the video description to a blog article which talks about cannibalism in T-Rex and another blog link to Scotty, the story of the heaviest T-Rex so far described to date, complete with damaged tailbones, broken ribs and all. Our blog site contains thousands of articles all about dinosaurs, paleontology, fossil finds and model collecting. We heartily recommend it to you. Thanks for watching. We hope you've enjoyed this short video. And one more thing. Thank you.